All right, let's leave that there for a second. Shoot. Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Testing a couple of things out today. Uh, first thing, you know, I've just picked up this um, little stove, which is the Evil Eyes stove from One Tigress. Does a cracking job. Um, also out, got my Kribgoch Rup sack with me, which I'm also testing out as well. But I thought, you know, I'd come out into the woods again. Ah, didn't think to bring a teaspoon with me, but it's okay because I've got a stick. And make myself a brew with little bits of bark in it at the moment. But, you know, that's just one of those things. But the main thing that we are here today to look at... I'm trying to take that bad boy out of there. Let me just... That is spot on. The main thing that we are here today to look at is the Gerber Tri-Tip Mini Cleaver. Now this was sent to me, I've had this now, I've had this for about a month or so, just been testing it out, doing different little things with it. Um, predominantly designed to be more of a camp knife, a secondary knife that's there to help with cutting, scraping for the different edges that there are on this pry bar, uh, on this uh, mini cleaver. But I thought it'd be great to show this whilst out and about in the green. Um, but before we get into this, I want to say a massive thank you to Prepper Store, uh, Prepper Shop, sorry. Um, they are, I mean, if you're after prep stuff here in the UK, whether you're preparing for the zombie apocalypse or just, you know, preparing for that moment that you think maybe the, sh the um, Shinola may hit the fan or you're just out enjoying backpacking in the nature into nature then I definitely recommend you check them out I'll leave a link here and also in the description so that you can check them out more but for now what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around so we can have a closer look at the tri-tip So people have mentioned, you know, this is the Gerber Tri-Tip. It's a small knife that's predominantly designed to be a secondary knife that is good for um, your camp sort of stuff. So you can cut things with this, you can scrape things with this, you can do meal prep with this. I've not specifically tested this out as far as, you know, um, outdoors kind of stuff, battening, um, that sort of stuff, mainly because, you know, it, it's not really designed to do that. I think at a push, you know, pretty much most knives, if you wanted to, you could batten with them. Um, but with the geometry of this, um, it probably wouldn't fare well and the edge probably wouldn't stay on there too long either. So it's just something to consider, but this is, this is more of a secondary knife. When it comes, it arrives with this um, Kydex sheath, I, I, well, or at least I believe it's Kydex. That's part of, I mean, I've not done my due diligence there. Uh, I think it's Kydex. It could be just um, a, a, a plastic sheath, but it feels like it's one of those um, heated Kydex sheaths. I will check that and I'll put that down below here. Um, and it also has um, a belt clip so that you can uh, you can add this to your belt. Um, as far as ergonomics, or, no, ergonomics, <laughs> what I'm about to release this, it does have a handy thumb lock to to push this in, but you can wear it on either side. Um, the little knife itself will go into some measurements of this. So the complete length, which actually, because this tip comes out just slightly forward, the complete length is more kind of from here down to the butt of the of the handle. Um, in total, it comes in at 146 millimeters, um, which I believe is about, about five inches. When it's in your hand, it kind of pinches um, two to three fingers. Um, the the cutting edge here, which comes, which sweeps across the bottom, rather than being a uh, completely horizontal, um, what you get with, I suppose, a lot of European knives is they they do have more of a, a tend to a sweep to them. Which, when I say European, obviously, I mean kind of Western ones, whereas Japanese tend to have that completely smooth edge, or at least completely horizontal edge to them. Um, the cutting edge on this is 75 millimeters now normally at this point i'd go into the legality of this here in the uk um, it is under a three inch cutting edge but because this is a um a fixed knife 
this would be illegal without real reason for you to be carrying this in a public place it's not illegal to own it because you know i'm here i'm out in the countryside i'm not in a public place so it's perfectly legal to own but if you were to take this into a public place you would be asked um specific specifically you know why do you have this in a public place um so yeah just just to make sure that that's that's perfectly clear the handle length on this comes in at 84 millimeters the height um i guess you know because it's a cleaver some people will definitely want to know this um is 54 millimeters i don't have my inch ruler with me today so sorry about that guys but it, it's about about two inches maybe two and a half two yeah about two inches and then the thickness of the blade stock at its thickest part is 4.8 millimeters now this is a full tang knife so as far as stability or as far as security uh, is concerned this is one full piece of steel that goes all the way through to the edge. The scales on here are aluminium scales, which also helps to reduce some of the weight. Um, but, you know, we're talking about uh, a reasonably small, you know, it, it's the mini chopper. It's, it's reasonably small, so it comes in at 170 grams. The steel on this, the steel that is used is 7CR17 MOV, which, you know, it's a reasonably budget steel um, and as far as edge retention is concerned now I've been doing kind of household tasks that sort of thing that you do with a secondary knife like this I've been chopping things with it in fact you can hardly see any wear on it to be, to be fair um, I guess that just shows that the, the the edge that they put on this or at least the coating that they've put on this um, is reasonably good I've not been doing any hardcore I don't know, trying to chop down a tree or skin a bison with it. You know, we, we don't have bison here, here in the UK, but if we did, I'd totally do that. Um, but one of the advantages of this is because it's not one of these super steels, if you're out and about, it does start to dull. If you've bought something that you need to sharpen with it, um, then it is relatively simple to sharpen. Let's just get some more wood in here. Then it is... It is relatively simple to sharpen whilst you're out and about. Now, the reason this is called the the um, the tri tip, obviously, I mean, so we got we got we got three tips there. Um, this is great to be used uh, if you are chopping things, uh, and then you've got this additional edge here at the front. So if it is that you need to be able to use this to help to scrape against something, if you're trying to get scales off a of fish, that sort of stuff, you can certainly do that with this edge. And then you have this cutting edge here, which is great for being able to get up really close into things and to be able to chop away if you do need to cut some things. The handle, uh, I know I used my... I mispronounced my words earlier when I was talking about ergonomics, but for a mini chopper, it's actually really nice. So... Um, I find that you, you, it, it's just a three finger chopper, but what I've also found is just by using those last three fingers and being able to pinch it here, um, it, 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 actually, it actually works a little bit better to be able to do that. You can get a little bit more of a finer control on that. Uh, but if you needed to, you could use those three fingers, push your thumb right against the spine here to be able to chop things so that you can, you can do whatever you choose um, although Mrs Morlander wasn't too chuffed to find me doing it I've cut chicken I've cut beef I've cut oh, we had some pork chops the other day uh, they cut really nicely with this being able to clean it afterwards is relatively simple um, I just cleaned it <laughs> um, it wasn't difficult to clean at all it just it just cleaned um, the only thing that I would think possibly that somebody maybe concerned about or possibly want to change would just be the fact that these scales um, the two pins that hold the scales in place here there is there is a, a tubular pin here which um, mainly is so that, so that you can put a lanyard through there but these two pins can't be removed if there was anything that I would possibly change about this knife it would be 
to be able to remove or the ability to remove these two pins. Just from things like food prep, as I mentioned, you know, I've been cutting chicken and, and, and other type of meat with it. You really do want to make sure that you can get underneath these scales to be able to um, clean those properly, mainly because of, you know, some of the germs that are associated with chicken and, and, and other meats. I think if there was a, um, a Gerber pry uh, why do I keep saying pry? I keep saying pry because it rhy rhymes with tr rhymes with try. Um, but if there was a Gerber try tip version two, I'd love to see that implemented here. Even if it was just one single larger screw or something that you could take out, I think that would be great. As I mentioned, not to keep going over it, but for things like food prep to be able to get underneath these scales, I think would be incredibly useful. Um, now with the scales not coming off, that means that whatever's under there is secure, but you know, if, if it got wet and it would come out underneath, then there is a chance that you could get that on hand on your hand and you could, you could contaminate some food as well. I've probably gone over that way too much, but if anything, that would just be the, the one thing that I would possibly change about this knife but other than that do you know what it's a, it's a great little knife i think it's oh why is it not going in now because i'm an idiot i think it's great that it comes with this little sheath having this sheath on your belt i think some of you if you are left handers you know you might complain that it's it really, it, it's designed to be on the right hand side. You pinch that and you pull it out. Um, you could swap it onto the left hand side, but really you're pulling it out the wrong way around. Um, that's maybe something that they might consider changing or maybe doing a left, just a, a left-handed version of this. I think that would probably be appreciated. But the fact that it comes with this is great. It's incredibly useful just to put this on your belt and just have it there for when, I don't know, you're making some food, you need to chop something up, bang, you put it back and it, it, it's done with. And I think for form factor and, and how it's used, I think it's just a great little knife. Um, and it's actually been really fun to chop out, uh, to test out. Um, apart from the weirdness that, you know, on quite a few occasions, even the kids are like, Dad, why are you using that? That's, that's just a bit bizarre. But, you know, hey, I'd rather be bizarre than normal. Normal people scare me. Oh, there is absolutely nothing better than a cup of tea out here. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. I'm going to get more into this. I don't know whether I'll start to include it on this channel, maybe do it more, maybe start up a second channel, but um, certainly my desire and fascination for getting out into the wilderness is, is definitely increasing. Um, and making content like this, just something slightly different, um, certainly, increases, uh, certainly increases that desire. Uh, but back to the knife. This is a great little knife and I, I wasn't really expecting too much from this. It was me that contacted um, Prepper's shop about it and said, you know, I've, I've had, I've seen it around quite a few times and I, it's just interested me as, would you mind sending me one? I'd love to test it out, make some content. Um, and they said, yeah, of course. I mean, it goes without saying that the uh, the people of Newquay and the people of the Kingdom of the Moorlands have absolutely amazing diplomatic um, connections. We've we've always been lifelong fans of each other. Um, Cornwall is the Moorlands of the South, as we like to refer to them. Um, so yeah, it was great for them to send this my way. So I'll, I'll definitely say it again, but if you're after anything to do with prepping or whether it's just getting out into the wild, then you should definitely check out Prepper's Shop and I'll leave some links in the description below. I'd like to say a massive thank you for sending this my way. If, if anybody has been thinking about this, um, I certainly do hope it's helped for you to make your mind, whether it's, whether it's something that you would like to use. Um, I'll leave some of my social media links in the description below. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to everybody that came onto the live um, thing the other night. Next time I do one, I'll be a little bit more clever about it and make sure I promote when it's going to be, but we'll definitely do one before Christmas. Uh, if you liked this content, then please feel free to hit that like, share and subscribe. That would be amazing. But for now, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC.
Getting a bit too hot. Right in the eyes. This is life, this is life. Smoke in the eyes, a warm cup of tea, and no one around. This is life. Although my eyes are stinging a little bit. Probably sat a bit too close to it. It's definitely giving off a nice bit of heat. It's a great little stove. It's got a lot of aeration all the way around the bottom as well. A lot of air kind of getting sucked in from the bottom. Even though this did spill over, the residual heat evaporated all of the milky water within seconds and it's it's now back to a to a water boiling heat. It's a it's great. Very impressed. Very, very impressed. At this point I'll turn the camera around so that we can, you know, we can get a closer look at the knife, but I'm just enjoying this tea.